Hello, this is Ann Olson, and I'm here today with um, a few more uh, things to add to your orientation. Uh, you should have seen the first video already that I recorded on Illuminate on just how to get started with my heritage and the forms and the quizzes. Well, this one uh, today is just another 10 minutes or so that I want to show you some of the bells and whistles, um, some of the added benefits, particularly of this uh, item under bookmarks on your main page in 551. Um, I'd like you to look and click here on companion website for the land and technical communications text. This will always be available with one click and you need to the web page. There are four items here, and you'll mostly be interested in the student resources and then the PowerPoint uh, presentations that are under instructor resources. So let's click right now on student resources, and you'll see that it's set up very much like my heritage with a full navigation menu in the left side um, that gives uh, one link for each of the chapters all the way down. Let's go ahead and click on chapter one. And you see an overview uh, of all the main ideas. It's a summary or an abstract, so to speak, of the of the full chapter. And you'll see under multiple choice quiz, um, these I have not used for the first five weeks. For the first uh, five weeks, I've made the the quizzes in my heritage under coursework, but starting week six, I think I'm going to employ these. So just make sure you know where they are. Won't be using the exercises uh, or a lot of these things, but you're welcome to click around. Um, one, it, it, these these sources are very good if you, for example, can't think of an issue or a topic to focus one of your paper assignments on. You could click here under Hot Topics or Projects and Case Studies. Um, there are all kinds of, of possibilities and good ideas for, for issues. I wanted to show you under Models and Templates. Uh, for example, in your final report, you'll have to include numerical data. So you can click here for an example of what um, the visual looks like and how you need to caption it and explain it along with the visual. Uh, let's take a look at bar graphs. Good examples all with um, sources cited and how to cite them. Uh, let's see, let's look around. Um, there are templates. If you need a template for a memo or for later on, we'll have this bad newsletter or letter of concern, one of your assignments. Templates for resumes um, if you and, and cover letters and business letters. Um, just good, helpful resources. One thing I found that I really liked about this um, left side menu under student resources is this Next to the bottom item, editing for grammar, usage, and mechanics. Starting next week, uh, I've at, I'll, I'll be asking you for a week two to say what your worst grammar problems are, the sorts of errors that you tend to make most commonly. And this would be one very nice resource for, uh, for getting some practice and how to fix it. For example, let's look at um, passive and active voice, which is a very common problem in technical writing. People tend to use passive. I mean, sometimes there's a good reason for it, but most of the time for technical writing, you want to be direct and use just subject, verb, object. Uh, so looking at the passive in um, exercise 20, you'll see um, how this gives you practice in identifying which ones are passive. Now, it doesn't show you how to fix them. 
So let's look at exercise 21, passive voice. And it actually is more interactive. It, it gives you a passive voice sentence. The strike was handled by the employees in a calm and professional manner. And you would write something here and check the possible answer to see how close you were. And they have made this passive voice into active by putting the subject first, followed by the verb. The employees handled the strike in a calm and professional manner. So these would be really handy. Okay, so that's under student resources for all the various chapters. Um, I wanted to also show you how to get to instructor resources. You can do it right here with this drop-down menu. Um, this is long. It shows just all the many of the things that we just went over. But starting right here under instructor resources, you'll see under the submenu PowerPoint presentation. You could click right here or just simply click on home for this web page and instructor resources and power presentations are listed second. And clicking on any one of these, this is particularly helpful if you haven't gotten your book yet and you need um, to address chapter one and chapter 15 for memos for week one. Um, opening up that PowerPoint will give you um, a very good overview. Uh, a lot of the questions in the quizzes in the quiz for this week are the answers are available right here. All right, let me close this out. These PowerPoints are available for all the chapters, as you see. And I wanted to show you a few other things. We'll go back to the main page in my heritage. And uh, under forms of any week, there are a couple of items that I think you'll find helpful. I'm going to click on forms. Many of you have answered already, and that's just great. Um, the first thing I wanted to show you on the main form page is this user list. And this will be helpful if you can't remember, say, how many replies you've made or if you've made enough. And I use this list every Monday when I uh, add up the points and enter your points for the week before in the gradebook. I check here. I see how many posts you have um, uh, completed and how many replies to other students by Sunday. So looking down this list here, most of you have three posts and that's just perfect for uh, week one. We had one A, B, and C. Now for replies, ideally you would have at least two replies for each form. So shoot for six under replies for this week. Now, I, I was deliberately vague about how to reply here. Um, sometimes the uh, content of the forms is such that it really doesn't mean it doesn't need in-depth discussion, and it would be hard to reply that many times. So you'll get a sense as, as as we go along. For right now, let's just shoot for two, and uh, I'll try to indicate to you when when you need less than that. We're a, we're a small group, and I think I want to promote as much discussion and feedback and support for each other as as I can, and this is the way to do it in the forums. All right, let me show you one other thing. Going back to forms, and that is when you click reply, you have an option to omit the previous uh, post so that uh, what, what tends to happen is that we see posts within posts. It, it keeps recording every what everyone said, and that's just not necessary. So a good way to stop that is just to click when you're ready to reply to someone. Um, you'll see on the main forms page after you click on, say, 1A, you have this option box right here in the upper right corner, View Reply Options. And 
most of you, the, the default setting here is like this. Uh, you have automatically copied the text of the message you are replying to into your reply. D, omit that one. <laughs> Don't check that one so that it's just your reply that shows. It just is a cleaner presentation. Um, and then please do click show my photo. Uh, it helps so much to see, you want to save options, um, to, to just associate the face with the writing. For example, here, Kara has posted to 1A for writing anxiety, and I wrote a reply and I have this, um, I clicked the show my photo, so it'll show uh, each time I reply to someone. So, speaking of photos, um, first thing in week two, I'm asking everyone to please post a photo into my heritage. And the way to do that is to look at your name up in the far right hand corner. Um, right next to it is personal info. Clicking that, you'll see the photo tab, the second one in, and it's just a simple browse for your own JPEG file, and uh, upload that, and click save, and you're done. All right, um, I think that's it for my additional items for orientation. Uh, see you in the forums.